So while I mentioned earlier that my 50-year-old um, overweight medial root tears do not want an osteo osteotomy, I think I'm much more aggressive on recommending an osteotomy in patients who have malalignment when I'm talking about patellofemoral instability. Um, so back to this algorithm that I showed before, if you have a patient who um, is being considered for surgery, either they have a cartilage injury or they're a multiple dislocator, it really depends once they're skeletally mature on their alignment. So again, an osteotomy is for alignment. Um, I see patients every once in a while who are treated with um, an MPFL for pain. So MPFL is for instability. Whether you add an osteotomy really depends on alignment. And um, you know, when, when you look at a patient um, in the operating room where you can laterally translate their patella and it'll just fit, sit fixed off laterally, um, this doesn't mean this patient 100% needs an osteotomy, but in general, a patient is not this unstable uh, who has normal alignment uh, and no trochlear dysplasia. You don't see patients just sitting with their patella laterally uh, with normal anatomy. So why am I interested? So in the United States, 6% of orthopedic surgeons are female, and somehow that means that I seem to see more female patients, and this is a much more common uh, problem in female patients. Um, also, many of these patients should have had surgery, but unfortunately, a lot of the patients who actually went through with surgery had the wrong surgery. So a TTO is, I think, a very uh, versatile operation because it treats both arthritis or cartilage injury as well as the instability. So again, MPFL is just for stability, but you need the osteotomy to unload the patellofemoral joint and improve patellar tracking. So you can't take a patient like this with this x-ray on the left with significant lateral tilt and fix them with just an MPFL. You can't pull the patella over with just an MPFL, and if you do, it's going to stretch out. So it might look okay at time zero, but it's not going to work. This patient had an MPFL, and you can see how laterally translated their patella is because they were not treated with an osteotomy, and this x-ray on the right is after they had an osteotomy with a revision MPFL. So for instability alone, you should consider an osteotomy, and I, if, or start thinking about it if the TTTG is above 15. I think it's even more important if they have patella alta, if the catam de champ is above 1.2. Here it's sitting at about 1.4. And then what is significant trochlear dysplasia? I think a B or a D. So we used to talk about Q angle, and now we measure TTTG. Um, I think that's been a, a major improvement. So here the TTTG is 22.3. I do not think this patient's a candidate for an isolated MPFL. Something new that we started measuring, Pete Fabricant, who's at HSS, I think did the study um, as part of his fellowship. Um, we, start, we can measure the distance from the lateral trochlear ridge to the lateral patellar tendon. That's just another measurement you can look at. I tend to not measure this in my clinic, but I look at it. I look at where that patellar tendon is sitting in relation uh, to the lateral trochlea. I think this is somewhat helpful. It would be rare that you see a patient like this with a normal TTTG, however. And what about patellar trochlear index? Um, do you always get your calculator out to measure the Catam de Champ? No, I don't. I look at how much overlap there is. You can look here at what percentage of the patella uh, overlaps the trochlea. You can look at the, the total amount of overlap. But I think um, this all talks about engagement. And so I think the engagement is really important. So if you look at this MRI here, um, we got the MRI number one after um, we knew they had a patellar dislocation because we want to rule out a cartilage injury. So I think all these patients need an MRI after a traumatic injury. Um, they're going to have an MPFL for stability, um, plus minus on the cartilage, depending if they had a cartilage injury. And then an osteotomy is indicated if they're skeletally mature, ALTA, high TTG. TTTG. Um, here again, you can see significant patella alta. And one note here is when you look at the sagittal image on the right, you're looking at the ACL. When you don't see the patella, that's almost a 100% indication that they're going to need an osteotomy. Um, when the patients have significant alta, you may also consider a distalization. You need to bring the patella down into the groove. And again, the MPFL can keep it in the groove. It can't bring it down to the groove. So here you can see there was a lateral lengthening, a small incision for the MPFL. Here's um, a lateral incision along the tibial, a proximal tibia. Um, I'm using a, a bovie to basically outline um, my osteotomy. I'm taking out down that anterior compartment. I typically make about a five centimeter uh, shingle. Uh, I use 
I, I don't use a commercially available guide. I use K wires and I adjust my angle depending on how much I want to medialize them versus how much I want to anteriorize them. Um, so here you can see two K wires um, and uh, basically a saw and I finish the osteotomy uh, with osteotomes. This is done through a very small incision, usually about a five centimeter incision. This procedure takes about 30 minutes. And um, here, if I'm doing just a straight distalization, again, you can see a small incision. I use a smaller saw blade here, and it's a chevron type incision. You can see um, this uh, distal aspect of the osteotomy is at five centimeters, and there's a separate um, cut at six centimeters. Here is just a commercially available allograft sterilized wedge and then uh, fixing down uh, the shingle. Again, this is for just a straight distalization osteotomy and here just repairing the periosteum. Um, so a few pearls don't over-medialize these patients. This is if you really pay attention to how much um, your goal is to medialize them, how much you want to distalize them. Um, Over-medialized patients, you can see on this MRI image, the sclerosis and the medial facet. These are miserable, miserable patients. And beware of patella baja. So this image on the right, they did a femoral nerve block. The patient didn't move their knee for the first six, six weeks uh, with very impressive patella baja. She really had a completely uh, non-functional knee. It was essentially that they gave her a knee fusion. So I think these patients should be moved immediately. I let them flex to 90 degrees starting on post-op day one. Not that they're necessarily there for a couple weeks, but I think it's really important to start moving them. Um, I keep them non-weight-bearing for four weeks unless there's a distalization, and then they're non-weight-bearing for six. Uh, we tend to use uh, cryotherapy, uh, muscle stim on the quad, and um, we get them moving, as I mentioned, immediately. Um, I'm basically out of time, but um, thank you very much. I think we'll get to more of this as we